This video is brought to you by myself. So here on YouTube, there's this new thing called the community page. If you click on this join button, that's like next to my name, you should be able to see a video that explains it a whole lot better. So watch that video. And with this, this is all in the, the name of trying to make YouTube a bigger part of my life. Right now it's a side project and just kind of do it if I can, but I would, I would love to do it on a regular basis. But anyway, real quick, let's go ahead and get started. All right, so today we're gonna to be working on something pretty amazing that I found out, is that you can create an alternate app icon. I first noticed this when I was in this app called Actions by Moleskin, that you can like choose your color of the app icon that you wanted, and I was, I was mind blown. I was like, what? We can do this? So I took to the internet and found out how to do it. And uh, I'll link some resources down below. But without any further ado, let's go ahead and just do it. The process is actually quite simple. So first off, we need to create our app icon. So I like using Sketch for this. So what I did is I created basically the logo in a PNG form. And then inside of Sketch, I just added the background, the foreground color and whatnot. And I exported various types or colors of the icon that I wanted. One thing about this is not as like magical as you hope it would be. Like you could actually go in here, you choose a color and it's editing the app icon and whatnot. No, there are a bunch of preset app icons. And that's what we need to learn here. So what you do is create a bunch of preset app icons. I have the red, white, and blue. I don't know why I chose those colors. America. And just a note here, I have it as like white, 1x, 2x, and 3x. You can just have it at 1x or something like that, but it's a whole lot better if you have all three stages. The 60 by 60, the 120 by 120, and the 180 by 180. If you have all of these, it'll scale perfectly to your application. And so that's why Sketch is really good because you can just export and it'll export all three at the same time. Anyway, let's go ahead and get started on the Xcode project now. So in order to get started on the Xcode project, we open up Xcode, give it a name. I'm gonna call this icon test. And from there, we just get right into it. So this is the, the most complicated part of all of this. Uh, we have to go into the info.plist. And inside of this info.plist, we have to type in something called CF bundle icons. We're just gonna type out icon files, iOS 5. Once you have that in there, it'll show a primary icon and also a newspaper icon. I don't care about the newspaper icon, so I just kind of deleted that, but you can keep it if you want. And with this, we want to go ahead and create a new section called CF Bundle Alternate Icons. And this is going to be a dictionary. Now, once that's created, we want to create a new section. And this is also going to be another dictionary. I'm going to call this white. Now, inside of this dictionary here, we're going to create an array array that is called CF Bundle Icon Files. And then inside of that array, we just want to add the names of our icons. And so one of the first things that we need to do is actually import those icons into our project. So what we're going to do is create a new group. Inside of that group, we're going to put all of our icon files that we want in there. Also, one important thing to note here is you want to make sure that you named your icon files very smartly. So I put it as red, black, white, whatnot, because you're going to use those names in referencing. So you want to make sure that you named them something smart. And also with the 1x, 2x, and 3x, you want to make sure that they all have the same first part of the name. So black 1x, black 2x, black 3x, or something like that. Anyway, I think you guys get the point. So inside of that array, we want to put our first icon, which is going to be white, capitalized the same way that it is in the file and whatnot. Don't add the .png, all right? And then once we have the white done, I'm just going to copy that and paste it a few times. And we're just going to go through and rename all of them. So we have red, blue, and then black. So red for the CF bundle icon files, it's going to be red and blue, blue. And I think you get it now. So now that we have set up our icons, how can we actually access these icons? So that's where we go to the scene delegate. What we're going to do is create a new class. This new class is going to be called icon names. This is going to be an observable object because we want to see these names in another part of our application. So in order to do this, we're going to say var icon names, colon, open bracket, close bracket, string, question mark. This is going to be an optional. We don't really know if if for some reason all of the alternate icons aren't there. Uh, we don't want our application to crash. So continuing on here, setting up the rest of this, we're going to say init, we're going to create an initializer, and then we're going to create a function called get alternate icons. So inside of our initializer, we're going to call that get alternate icons. And then we're going to say if let current icon equal UI application dot shared dot alternate icon names dot alternate icon name. Single. So we'll come right back to this current icon, but for now, let's go ahead and create another variable called current index. 
So current index is going to be the exact index that we're at inside of our icon names. So we're gonna say at published var current index will be equal to zero for the time being. And with this, we go back into our current icon. We're gonna say self dot current index will be equal to icon names dot first index of the current icon. And then if there's nothing there, if our current icon is equal to zero or something like that, we just wanna have that optional. So we're gonna say question mark, question mark, zero. And also I did this wrong. Go back to the var icon names and where it says nil, you just put those in brackets and that'll get rid of the error. Now, in order to get the alternate icons, we need to say if let icons equal bundle.main.object for info dictionary key in the which we're gonna access our CF bundle icons. In other words, we go into our info.plist and we're exactly looking for that specific CAF bundle icons. That's the place that we just edited that has all of our icons and the icon names and whatnot. And then as we know, this is all a dictionary. So we wanna make sure that this is as question mark string colon any, which in other words is a dictionary. So alongside these icons, we also wanna create the alternate icons. So we're gonna say let alternate icons equal bundle dot main dot object. And we're just gonna take that same part and pluck it in there. This is actually wrong, but we'll fix it in a minute. And then we just change the text inside of that dictionary key to CF bundle alternate icons. Then once we're inside of this, we have all the icons, we wanna iterate through these icons. So we're gonna say for open parentheses, close parentheses, underscore comma value. In other words, we're just trying to access the value inside of our, inside of our dictionary. In alternate icons, open curly bracket, close curly bracket, guard let icon list equal value. So we're taking that value that we created earlier as a dictionary string any. So we're trying to access the exact name of the icon. Remember, remember it was like a dictionary inside of a dictionary. We're just trying to get inside of that other dictionary and access the name. So once we have the icon list, we go inside of the icon files. So in order to get into the icon files, we need to say guard let icon files equal icon, icon list in the which we're gonna look for CF bundle icon files, else return. Be sure to put that at the end of any of these guards that we are making. This is just a protection, just to not make your app crash. And then we're gonna say guard let icon equal icon files dot first, else return. And once we have our icon, we wanna say icon names dot append, and we're gonna append our icon. In other words, we're just going through all of our alternate icons. We're trying to grab the icon list, the list of the icons, the icon files, and then the actual icon and the name of the icon. Once we have that, then we append that into our icon names so that we can access it later and put it into an array. Now, this is where I made a stupid mistake. So for our alternate icons, we actually wanted to iterate through the icons that we just created. So instead of saying bundle.main.object for info dictionary key, we just actually wanna say icons, open square bracket, CF bundle alternate icons, close square bracket. And that's going to look inside of our dictionary for those specific alternate icons. Now we have these icon names coming in, but how do we access them? That's where we come into the content view. So what we're gonna do is start building our form. So first off, we need to say navigation view, open curly bracket, form, open curly bracket, close curly bracket, picker, and then for this, we wanna have this selection binding to something. We want this selection binding to an environment object. Now this environment object is what? It's going to be our icon names. So we're gonna say environment object var icon settings will be equal to our icon names. In other words, it's gonna to bind to that thing. Once our icon names, that current index in our icon names actually changes, it's also going to change our picker. So inside of our picker, we're gonna say dollar sign icon settings dot current index, in the which we're also gonna give this a label, in the which I'm just gonna title it icons, in the which we're gonna put inside of our picker a for each, so that way it can iterate through all the values. And then we go right back to the label, that way we can put a text around the icons, cause this is Swift UI. And then inside of our for each, we're gonna say, we're gonna iterate through all of our icon names and put them inside of a, a view. So we're gonna say zero space dot dot, less than icon settings dot icon names dot count. And then which we're gonna say open curly bracket, close curly bracket, I in, we're just 
grabbing that value. It's going 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. It's just going through all of our values and we want the current index that it's at. And then inside of this, we wanna build our view. The thing that displays like the name of the icon, the image of the icon and whatnot. So in order to do that, we just say H stack and then we're gonna say text and put in the icon settings dot icon names for the index, the current index that it's at or the I value. And then this is an optional value. So you wanna make sure question mark, question mark, default. That way it'll just fall back onto default if nothing's there. And then it also needs to reference self. So just put that in there, self.icon settings. Now for image, things get a little bit trickier. So we're gonna say image, open parentheses, UI image, UI image named, in which we're gonna say self.icon settings, dot icon names for the index, the I value, and then we're gonna fall back to default if that doesn't work. And then if that name isn't there, if the default isn't there, if, all the, if everything hits the fan, then we wanna make sure that it's question mark, question mark, UI image, open parentheses, close parentheses. That way we just have like uh, a blank image in there if anything goes wrong. Then what we wanna do, these images, they're gonna be a little bit big or a little bit small. So we're just gonna say dot resizable, dot frame, and then we're gonna put the width as 50 and the height as 50 with the alignment as leading. You can probably mess around with the alignments, but it worked for me. And once we have that working, let's go ahead, build and run, and let's see what's going on. And as you can see, it gave me this thread one, fatal error, no observable object of type icon names found. Now this is because we didn't feed in our environment object. So in order to do this, we need to go back to our scene delegate, and we're gonna say where it says window, window.rootViewController is equal to UI host and controller. We're gonna make sure and edit our, our root view so that our content view also has that environment object. So we say content view dot environment object, open parentheses, icon names, open close parentheses, close parentheses. So what that does is it initiates the icon names with the content view so that when the content view builds, it's actually already filled with information. So now if you were to build and run this, you should be brought to this big beautiful view that has what? It says icons and default. Then once you click on default, you'll see default white, black, blue, and red. So awesome. It's actually seeing those images and it's getting those in there. And also our images are coming in as black. So the way to fix that is you go back over to your image and right after it's resizable, just say dot rendering mode, original. That way it renders the original image that we put in there. All right. So one of the things is we're not seeing our default app icon. So the way that we can do that is if we go into our assets.exe assets, it says that our name of our app icon is app icon. It's not default. So it's referencing something else. So you can go about this two ways. You can change app icon or you can go right into your content view and change the icon, the, the, the optionals to app icon and app icon instead of the defaults that we were putting in there. And now if we were to build and run this, you should be able to see your app icon in there now. Now, but uh, now we're clicking on these images, we're doing stuff, but it's not doing anything. So how can we actually change the image now? So that's where we need to go after the rest picker here, and we're gonna say dot on receive. So when it receives an action, in the which we're gonna say self dot icon settings dot current index, around that put square brackets dot publisher dot first. And we're gonna perform what action? So I'm just gonna say open curly bracket, close curly bracket, and we're gonna perform an action in here. So first off, we wanna grab the thing that we clicked. So they we're gonna also say value in, and that's gonna be the index that we just clicked, or the item, or the app icon that we just clicked. So what we're doing in here is a little bit of UX. Let's imagine that, yes, I have that app icon, I wanted to change it, but I changed my mind and I click on the same app icon. We don't wanna change the app icon in that instance. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna check what the current alternate app icon name is right now, and we're gonna compare it to the one that we just clicked. So I'm gonna say let i equal self.icon settings.icon names.first index of 
in which we're gonna say UI application dot shared dot alternate icon name. And if an alternate icon name wasn't picked or anything like that, we just wanna fall back on zero. So question mark, question mark zero. Now to compare what we just clicked with the I value, we're gonna say if value is not equal to I, open curly bracket, close curly bracket. Then inside of this, this is where we actually set our icon. This is the, the exciting part. We're gonna say UI application dot shared dot set alternate icon name, open parentheses, in the which we're gonna say self dot icon settings dot icon names, open square bracket, close square bracket, in the which we're gonna put our value. So in other words, we're just going into our icon names, grabbing the specific one that we just picked, and plunking that in as the alternate icon name. This one phrase right here, UI application dot share dot set alternate icon name is really all you need. The rest of this is just UI work and whatnot. And then with this, we also need a completion handler. So we're gonna say open curly bracket, close curly bracket, error in. If error is not equal to nil, we're gonna print out what our error is. Else we're gonna say we're finished. We're just gonna print out that we're finished. And so now let's go ahead and build and run this and let's see what's we, what we got. So right now let's click on our icons. Let's click on the red one and boom, it says that you have changed the icon for icon test. Let's close out and you can see that it changed it on the home screen as well. Now if we do this for the blue one, it'll set it back, the white, whatnot, it all works. Now for some reason my black wasn't really working too well. Um, and so I went back to my icons and I looked at the icon name and there's a slight dash in between the at 1x, at 2x, and at 3x. So what I did is I just erased that dash and now we're good to go. Now the black also appears. But yeah, there you have it. That's how you make an alternate app icon. That's how you make the user interface to change your app icon. And hopefully you guys can actually apply this to your own applications. If you do, if you ever make anything, send it to me. I love seeing these things on Twitter. So at Architap on Twitter. But if you have any comments, questions, or anything, leave them in the comment section down below. I'll try and get back to them. But anyway, if you liked it, be sure to subscribe, hit that like button, and I'll see you in the next one. Ciao.